Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Falk. I'm the head of engineering at Orbital Insight. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about data from space. So who am I? Like many of you, I'm a software developer. Been a software developer about seven companies so far. Um, and now I'm a head of engineering. So I spend most of my time doing meetings, but occasionally I'll still spend time doing design discussions, doing code reviews. And in my free time, I still like to dabble on things like Project Euler. So who's Orbital Insight? What do we do? Orbital Insight is a, a large data supplier and analytics provider where we take data, geospatial data, from anywhere on the planet, from any overhead sensor, and translate that into insights for the end customer. So specifically, we have a suite of high performance artificial intelligence and machine learning analytics that run on this geospatial data, and we build them to specifically determine natural and human surface level activity anywhere on the planet. What that really means is we take any type of data associated with the latitude and longitude, and we identify patterns so that we can so we can detect anomalies. And that's everything that we do is all about uh, identifying those patterns to detect anomalies. So more specifically, what type of problems do we solve? So supply chain intelligence, this is one of the use cases that we, we like to talk about a lot. It's one of our main primary verticals that we go after right now. Um, and as Scott mentioned earlier, this had a huge impact last year when COVID hit. So specifically, supply chain intelligence is all about identifying movement patterns to and from operating facilities to identify changes in those supply chains. How do we do this? So for us, we can do things where we track the movement of trucks. So identifying trucks moving from one location to another in aggregate. Same thing we can do with foot traffic. We can do the same thing for looking at aggregate groups of people moving from one location to another and analyzing their patterns of life. We can look at two different locations and determine how people are moving from one location to another or going back and forth. All of this is extremely valuable for detecting how a supply chain operates and then identifying the changes to that supply chain. As I said last year with COVID, everything changed. In particular, supply chains changed incredibly. And it was just hugely important for customers to know where their goods or their products were coming from and where they were going, where there were disruptions in their supply chain and how that's affecting their overall supply and demand. So to use our, our platform, our suite of tools, you can start to gain a much better picture of where your suppliers or your distributors are going from, coming from or going to. So what's our team look like? So my team is currently about 50 engineers. Um, we're spread into four different teams and the teams are structured like this. So the first team that we have is infrastructure engineering. And this team largely deals with deploying our dockers using Kubernetes. So this team is all about taking dockers built by other teams, sometimes building the dockers themselves and putting them into our production system. Our platform engineering team, they produce these microservices. So they produce microservice Docker images. They develop and test with them locally. Their entire environments are Dockerized. They produce these Dockers, hand them over to infra infrastructure engineering to be deployed. Similarly, our product engineering team does the same thing. They develop and test with Docker locally. They also produce a suite of Docker images that the infrastructure team can then deploy. And lastly, we have our R&D team. And this team specifically produces machine learning algorithms using NVIDIA Docker. Collectively, we've actually built 381 Docker repositories and 14 million, we've had 14 million Docker pools over the lifetime of the, of the company. Um, there's just a few stats about us. Um, but what I'm really getting to here is you can see actually Docker is becoming almost a form of communication between these teams. So one of the paradigms in software engineering that you're probably familiar with, encapsulation. It's really helpful for a lot of software engineering problems to break the problem down, isolate the different pieces of it, and start building interfaces between the code. This allows you to scale different pieces of the platform or different pieces of your code in different ways. It allows you to scale up certain pieces and keep others at a smaller level so that you can meet customer demands. And for us, one of the things that we can largely do now is use Dockers as that interface. So instead of having an entire platform where all teams are talking to each other and everything's kind of mishmashed in a monolithic uh, application, we can now say, this team is only able to talk to this team by passing over a particular Docker image. That defines the interface of what needs to be built before it passes to the other team and really allows us to scale up our development and be much more efficient. Um, also, I'd like to say we are hiring. Um, so we have a number of open roles. We have about 30 open roles in our engineering team that we're looking to fill by the end of this year. So if any of this sounds really interesting to you, please reach out after the presentation. So what does our platform do? Really, our platform allows you to answer any geospatial question. And we do this with three different inputs. So first off, where do you want to look? So we do this with what we call an AOI or an area of interest. 
largely you can think of this as a polygon drawn on the map. So we have a curated data set of almost 4 million AOIs, which you can go and you can search and use for your analysis, but you're also free to build your own. Second question is what you want to look for. We do this with the more interesting part of our platform of our machine learning and AI capabilities. So we have a suite of algorithms that automatically allow you to identify trucks, buildings, hundreds of different types of aircrafts, different types of land use, how many people are moving from one location to another, um, different locations that people in a particular area are moving to or coming from. All of these different analyses, all these different analytics are available at the click of a button and they determine what you want to look for. Lastly, you determine when you want to find what you're looking for. So that's just, uh, you know, do you want to look for the next three hours? Do you want to look for the last week? Do you want to look every month for the past two years? Whatever the time cadence is, you decide that, you hit go, and out pops a time series. And that time series tells you specifically where you wanted to look, what you wanted to look for, and how many or what percentage of the thing you're looking for appears in that area. Again, we do all of this to work towards patterns. So we use all this data to produce a time series. From there, we can look at it, determine the patterns, and then specifically identify the anomalies. As I mentioned with supply chain, this is extremely valuable to identify where things change. So we can answer these questions looking at a particular operating facility, looking at particular what is happening, what the level of activity is at that operating facility, where people are coming from, where they're going to after visiting that particular facility, and identify when and where that changes. Here you can just see it's a, a picture of our platform. It's actually showing all the devices in Manhattan um, over a period of time, and it's more of a heat map view, so you can actually see the hot spots in the area. So really, the, and this is the heart of the talk, but what happened in 2020? Um, so for many, you know, like many of you, 2020 was a, a difficult year. Um, COVID hit, and that changed a lot of what we were doing, not from an engineering perspective, but also from an entire company perspective. Um, for us, the motivation really became to make sure that we were lowering our costs and increasing innovation simultaneously. Now, those two things often compete with each other. A lot of times you want to increase innovation, that's going to increase your cost. But the challenge last year was how to do both simultaneously. So here's a few stats for you from our team. Um, in Q1 of last year, we were spending almost $600,000 per month on compute costs. Um, prior to COVID happening, that wasn't hugely a concern for us. It was a lot of money, but it wasn't as critical as it was last year when we really need to be much more efficient. Second one is flexibility. For us, we were deployed on a single cloud environment. And while we were cloud, uh, cloud ready, and that was great, we wanted to be more flexible. We wanted to be on more cloud environments so that we could reach more customers and also eventually get onto classified networks, expanding the, the base of our customers as well. From a custom analytics perspective, this is where we get into our traction. So last year, over the entire year, we computed 54,000 custom analytics for different users. We wanted to make sure that this number was steadily increasing despite us trying to lower our costs. So we didn't want the lowering cost to come as the sacrifice of our user base. Lastly, a particular percentage here that I'll say definitely needs to be improved um, is 75% of our projects never fail. So this is where we start to get into a bit of stability of our platform. Now, I'm not saying that 25% of our projects fail. Um, the way we measure this is if you have a particular project or computation that runs every day and any one of those runs fail, I count that as a failure because from an end user perspective, that's an issue. So this is something that we know we needed to improve on. We needed to grow and make our platform more stable. I mean, it's something that we really, really focused on last year. So where are we now? So now coming out of the COVID Valley, we are starting to soar again. Um, we had a, back in April of last year, we had the entire engineering team. We actually paused all development um, for about four weeks. We had everyone focused on reducing our compute costs in the cloud. We got it down to 200K over the period of a few months. And for the next 12 months, we hit that number every month. This was huge for us. Um, this is extremely important, like I said, in the COVID time period where cost and operating efficiency was everything. Um, so for us to be able to do that, that was a huge accomplishment last year and something we'll keep going forward. And one thing I would actually like to really highlight here too is what allowed us to do that. So first off, being in the cloud, uh, being able to migrate things like that, that was one thing. Um, we were able to use different cloud services in a more particular, in a more efficient way. We had a very detailed tracking of how we were spending things. We increased our data retention policies. We optimized our processing. However, one additional piece was switching to new technologies. Um, in particular, we migrated to GitLab CI CD. Um, and this is something that, because we use Docker, was extremely, extremely easy. 
We didn't have to go build new, new code containers or repositories or change our code in order to do this. We were simply able to migrate the containers over and start using a new CI CD tool. Um, so much, in fact, that we were able to do that migration with three engineers in just two weeks. From a cloud environment and flexibility standpoint, we're now operating in two different clouds. We were able over the last night over the last nine months to operate in the second cloud environment. And again, this is something that Docker helped with incredibly. Um, we didn't have to go and build all new interfaces to all new different services or all different tools in the next cloud provider. All we had to do was build a base cloud infrastructure layer that um, agnosted away all the different details of the cloud provider. And then our Docker's just worked. We can move them to another environment up and running and our platform was ready to go. From a traction perspective, we're about a third of the way through the year at this point. We've already exceeded the amount of custom analytics we produced last year. And this is thanks to a ton more algorithms, a whole suite of new analytics that we've been able to build over the past 12 months and will continue to build going forward. Um, so this is really, really great outcome for us because we were able to show that our costs were staying down, but our analytics and our customer traction was still going up. Lastly, from a stability perspective, we improved from 75% to 86%. Not quite at 99 or three nines or four nines, but we are getting there. Um, and this is actually thanks to really containerizing and modularizing different pieces of our platform so that we could scale up in different areas. This allowed us to increase that stability by saying, this piece of the code works over here, talks in an interface to the rest of the system. We can scale this piece up separately from the rest of the system. And that allowed us to much, much more easily identify issues in the system, fix those, and then correct the system overall. So. Basically, this is a summary of where we were last year, where we are now, and how much more successful we are now because of the, the issues that we went through last year and largely brought on by COVID. So with that, this is just a, a screenshot of the, our, our solution actually working on supply chain. So this is in particular is showing traceability of a distribution warehouse in Salt Lake City. So right in the center of the screen here, you can see the nice kind of orange red center. That's a distribution warehouse and all the lines outside of that, all the dots outside of that, are showing where people or where trucks are moving from that location. So this is really helpful for supply chain companies because they can start to identify where their suppliers are, uh, are coming from or where their distributors are going to. So with that, I want to say thanks again for following along and enjoy the rest of DockerCon.